But notice the rest of the verse, though. He says, who do all of this in the sight of the sons of men. In other words, don't hide what you're doing. Don't be afraid what other other people are going to say. And you know what they're going to say, but so what? Take refuge in him because he's got all kinds of goodness and great things laid up for those who fear him and are not afraid of men is what he's saying. In other words, that you'll do this in the sight of men because you're fearing him and not them. Now remember, the subtitle to the teaching starting in part one was, if you would only fear Yahweh, you would never be afraid again. Just fear him and never be afraid again. So he's saying that right here in the psalm. He's saying, look, how good is, you know, how great is all the goodness he's got laid up for those who would fear him and who would do all these things in the sight of men. And so here we are sometimes afraid. I'm afraid, what if my mother finds out? What if my cousin finds out? You know, I've got, you don't understand, every man for generations back is a pastor. I've met families like that. You know, five generation pastors, six generation pastors. Oh, how much, all my brothers, you know, five brothers are all pastors. I've met families like this. What are they going to say? I don't know. I don't care. I'm going to fear Yahweh. And I'm going to let him handle it. And when I say I don't care, I don't want to sound callous. Of course I care what they think and I care about them. What I'm saying is I don't care from the point of view of it affecting my decisions. I'm going to do what I'm going to do in the sight of men and let Abba deal with the rest of it. I'm going to do it gently and lovingly and meekly and, and all those kind of things. The fruit of the Ruach. Okay, you must do it while maintaining the fruit. So I'm not going to go and get, look, and the people make this mistake. We're getting to that time of year and none of you please fall into this trap. Stop, I don't want any beating up on Facebook or anywhere else because you have relatives doing Christmas. There's no reason to bother them. Leave them alone. Okay, if you believe you're not supposed to do it, don't do it. Let them see the witness and that's it. But don't beat people up. Abba has to show them these things. But yet there's going to be people who think it's all cool to mock and make fun of. Don't mock and make fun of. There's no fruit of the Spirit there. There's no maturity there. And everybody's going to see something on Facebook and go, oh, that's so funny. Here, everybody, let's get a good laugh at the expense of these other people who really don't know any better. And how is that right? Okay, that's not right. Why would you mock them when you know they just don't know? They're not rebellious. They just don't know. And by the way, you were them. There's almost nobody in this room that wasn't them at some point. And that's why Abba says over and over again, do not forget that you were slaves in Egypt. Do not forget where you came from. Do not forget where you came from. Do not forget where you came from. Why? So that you'll have mercy and compassion on those who are where you were. Oh, but we're so full of ourselves now because we're not there anymore. But you were them. And you were not the big giant rocket scientist you think you are now back then. And you're still not. You just think you are. Let's be honest. Okay, because you weren't so smart. That's not why you figured this all out. He chose to pull away some blinders, open up your eyes, open up your ears. That was his decision. It wasn't on your strength and your power. And if you think it was, you're in big trouble already. Okay, so it wasn't because you're smarter than anybody that you got this all figured out. You know you didn't get it figured out. He gave it to you. Okay, he handed it to you. And by the way, some of you, even when he handed it to you, you still kicked and screamed and struggled with it pretty good. So let's not even kid ourselves about that now that we're walking in it and we've been doing it for a while and we forget the struggle we had. So please, as we head towards, and we say this right before Passover with Easter, we say this again right before Christmas, let's not be mocking and making a joke out of those that are doing exactly what you used to do because they don't know any better. Please, let's not do that. All right, but he does say here, you do what you need to do in the sight of men. Amen. So that, what does that mean? When they want to come over, the relatives, and they don't understand why you don't have a Christmas tree, you just say, well, because this is where I am in my beliefs. And I've had people say, you know, there are people that, they're older in the generations, and they have children that want to come over with their grandchildren, with their grandchildren, their children, and they're like, oh, but my kids need to have a tree, and you don't have a tree, Grandma. Well, that's okay. Grandma's not having a tree. If they want a tree, they can do that at your house. Come after Christmas. Okay, because they're not coming into my house to do Christmas. Okay, so I don't need to do for you what you want for your children. If, you, if that's going to be a problem here, do it at your house. You don't have to bring them here. But you can do that lovingly and gently. But don't compromise. Be gentle, but don't compromise. You know, there was... Um, I don't know why this just came to my head. There was a movie that came out a long time ago. I think it was called Roadhouse. 
and, and, and uh, Patrick Swayze played a bouncer. And he came into a place where he was training guys who had no idea how to be bouncers at this club. And he kept saying to them, whatever they're doing, go up to them and be nice. And then in, you know, escort them out of the building, be nice. Always be nice. He said, no matter what you're doing, be nice. He says, so the guys who always say, well, when do I not have to, you know, is there a point when I'm not going to be nice? He says, well, I'll let you know when that is. Your job is just to do it, whatever you can, to help take the problem person out of the building and always be nice. Well, that's kind of fits what we're talking about here. I mean, it's kind of weird to bring that in as, a, as an example, but just think about it. No matter what you're doing, you have to still be kind. You have to be meek. You have to be gentle. You have to be loving. There should be joy there. There should be patience. There should be, you know what I'm saying? The nine aspects of the fruit need to be there. And you're going to see on Facebook a whole bunch of people lose their fruit of the Spirit. They're going to leave it behind because they're going to jump into attacking and mocking in the next couple of weeks. Stop. Don't do that. Just don't do the thing that's the problem and let people ask you, why aren't you doing what I'm doing? And then you say, I'm glad you asked. Maybe I can share that with you lovingly, gently, meekly, patiently, kindly, right? And that's the way we want to make sure we're doing this. But don't be afraid to do it. Just make sure we're doing it with the fruit of the Spirit.